I was I was doing this meeting in Churchville, New York, okay. right outside of Syracuse. And it was it was one of those, I mean it was a small meeting, not a lot of people there, but all of this crazy stuff was happening. I, I don't even know how to describe this describe meeting. Describe like, crazy. What do you well, mean? Well, there was a lot of spiritual activity. For the afternoon session, I decided, you know what? I think what we're supposed to do is everybody just go wherever you want to go. Go out to eat. But just if you feel like you're supposed to do something, go do it. If you're supposed to go drive over someplace and pray, then pray. If you're supposed to yell, yell. Just whatever it is. And then when we come back later, we'll talk about it. And so everybody just went off different places. People came back. Like somebody went into this, the top of the, the highest hill they felt like they were supposed to go to and yell to the four points of the compass. Somebody went over to this creek and felt like they were supposed to, I can't remember if they threw salt in it or something. Like somebody else blew a shofar in the park in the middle of the town and it was all these different things. But during the whole meeting, it was one of those meetings where you pray for somebody and they go down. And it's not just like sometimes, but people are going down a lot. But I noticed this pattern. Coins kept on falling out of people's pockets. Mm. And it was like, it would happen. And it would happen until it was like, wait a second, that's unusual. Like that happens sometimes, but not real often. Was it predominantly pennies? It was not. It was a variety. Okay. I mean, it was all types of coins. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying for this one guy. And while I'm praying for him, he hits the ground like somebody hit him in the head with a two by four. Like he just, boom, and he goes down. And when he goes down, me and three or four other people saw a, a dime and a few pennies just appear in midair and drop on the ground next to him like they would have come out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any coins in his pocket. And I finally figured out what was going on. God was releasing change. Mm -hmm. And it was just this, like, but I actually, I mean, they were not there. And then they were there. They like this far off the ground. And then they just dropped onto the ground next to him. And I was like, Okay, that was weird. Did you guys see that? What was that? You know, it was like one of those weird, weird things. <laughs> so there was this creek in the town, and I had somebody from the town that emailed me two weeks later because a lot of it had to do with cleansing the land and just dealing with stuff. So we did some repentance. Mm -hmm. um, actually, at one point, I had this ring that I bought in, in Jerusalem. And there was somebody there that was actually they were full-blooded uh, First Nations. And so we did some repentance. I handed him my ring. When I handed him my ring, this like this wave of power Whoa, just went yeah. through the room. Yes. Like I felt it. There were people outside. And they run inside. Like, what just happened? We just felt power come out of here. And and I mean, like there was a number of things like that. There was a creek that the water ran black. They called it Black Creek. Hmm. A couple weeks later, that creek was clear. Isn't that an amazing yeah. story of God? Isn't I, that like him? Yeah. That's beautiful. I love I that. I love that. Wow. And it's one of those things where you're like, you can't just make that up. No. To the, to the person that's the cynic or the doubter, you know, uh, you cannot make that up. Yeah. That God does things like that. And figuring out, like, I, I, like, well, how do you do something like that? I, I have no idea. You don't know. I didn't That's do the beauty. anything. That's the beauty of it, though. <laughs> Just, like, you know? It's, I didn't do it. Right. It's, because yeah. if you knew how to do it, I don't think it would happen. I right. don't know if God would release it. Yeah. You know? Um, because that's that's the beauty of Him. You yeah. just, you're lost in Him. You don't, you don't need to work it to make it happen. That's one of the cool things about, I mean, coming back, so Isaiah 61, Luke 4, mm -hmm. the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for, there's always a purpose right. for the power, there's, for every anointing, for every gifting, there's a purpose. And it's not because there has to be some function to make it valuable, you know, that, but there, there's a reason God, God is about the redemption of the created world. Like he created it for mm -hmm. a purpose and he's going to see that purpose fulfilled. And we get to be a part of that. And when we get to see and hear, he's often guiding us into this co-laboring 
where we end up doing stuff that we don't understand and it changes lives, but not just lives. It changes land. It changes nature. Mm -hmm. it, it, it shifts things. Not about figuring it out. It's just that simple trust in the weird thing. Like, I want to give him, I don't want to give him my ring. I love my ring. Why would I give him my <laughs> ring? But I was supposed to give him my ring yeah. and, and something happened and, you know, going to the, going to a park and blowing a shofar, and, you know, people looking at you funny, but that's what you felt like you're supposed to do. And, right. and God uses those crazy little things to do stuff that is unexplainable. And I love the co-laboring. Now that's a word that, um, is really used in, in Christian circles. It can become a buzzword a little bit. And we think of it like labor. We look at it like labor. And um, there's something to co-laboring where it's actually come up here, step into what you were really created to be. Step in with me. Yeah. And there's a with you side of it. Um, I remember we were ministering in this church in Canada, actually. And... We had, now this isn't a jewel story. Mm. This is a deliverance story. But I, I remember we were ministering and there was this guy that had this snake thing in his stomach. Like it was in his, out of his shirt. You could see it going like this. And my, I was over here praying for people. My assistant was over there. She's, <laughs> she's got this guy and I hear her say, I'm going to need Anna for a second. And so I come over and this snake is doing this and everyone in the room can see it. Everyone can see. This isn't like only I can see it. It's like okay. everyone can see his shirt going like this. And I'm like, okay, do hmm. I have previous experience with this? No. <laughs> is that going to stop the move of God? No. <laughs> It's a co-laboring, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, God, I don't really know. Like between me and God, I don't know what I'm doing right now, but <laughs> you do. Yeah. So what do I do? Yeah. And then I knew, I said, ah, oh, this came on you. And I said, when you saw that, met that witch doctor who was your uncle as a kid, I got that word that was just the, right. you know, just like that had yeah. to be a download from heaven. And he said, yes, 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 yes. And I said, and you, you know, there was a curse spoken over you in that moment when you were a kid and that curse needs to be broken. Now we're going to break that curse in Jesus name. So I lead him yeah. to break that thing off. And literally we watch this, this snake go vroom, like it, it totally stopped. But there was, so anyways, on that side of co-laboring, right. did I have experience no. Yeah. Now people don't want to say that, yeah. especially on camera. That's scary to say because you know you want to. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, I I didn't in the moment. I'm being honest. I didn't know, but I knew that I knew. Yeah. God. Right. And I knew what He said to do, and so I'm like, okay. Now afterwards, so He goes boom, and it goes in. Now I in the spirit, I saw the thing come out of His mouth. But I saw it so real. I went to my assistant. Did you see that snake pop out of his mouth? And she said, no. And I'm like, okay. So I was seeing it in the spirit realm. But I yeah. didn't. I saw it so real that yeah. I couldn't decipher at that moment. You know, I was seeing yeah. in the spirit realm. And after afterwards, it was like we had this moment where we looked at each other. We're like, that just happened. Wow. <laughs> we're like, wow. What? And then we're like. We'll talk about this later. Moving on. Because we didn't have time. Yeah. We had so many people lined up that right. needed deliverance and healing. I mean, it was like 70 people. We're go, go, yeah. go. You know, but we had that moment. We're like, like yeah. God just did that. But see, that's the cool thing about yeah. God. We get to discover yes. when we co-labor more and more and more. Yeah. I'm just like, wow, God, yeah. you did that. You're crazy. <laughs> but I he's love so it. fun, you know. He's He is so weird compared to what we think is normal yeah it's because we're weird but that that's that's a whole nother issue he's not the weird one we're the weird one that thinks that everything being the same all the time is actually normal which why would that be normal mm -hmm. but 
we've been developed in a manufacturing mindset in a manufacturing right. society with a manufactured education to get good manufacturers that manufacture the same thing again and again and again. And we call that normal, which is, I mean, that that's weird. But I, I love how God will do those crazy things that make no sense. And there is no book that you can go to that says, oh, when this happens, do this. Mm-hmm. You've, you've just got to learn how to trust. And, and I actually, I, I've, I've learned to be very uncomfortable when I feel comfortable, like I know what's going on. Right. That, no, that, that kind of scares saying. me because I, I'm, I'm like, wait, well, am I doing this? Am I, am I making this happen? Like, what, right. where are you at? What, what, if this is in my control, it's not in your control. I don't like it anymore. That scares me. I want something that is outside of my comfort level because I want it to be about him. Mm-hmm. I, I want him to do something that's unique because, I mean, he does weird stuff. I, I had a friend and he was one of the wildest seers that I've ever met. He, he was mentored by Bob Jones and Bob Jones said that he had the potential to be uh, more of a seer than he was. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, this guy was, I mean, he was crazy. We did this meeting. I'm glad he didn't tell me what he was doing during the meeting, but the next day he was explaining it. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I'm really glad I didn't know what was going on, <laughs> but I would watch him like, and you could tell when somebody's seeing something, oh, yeah. he's like, he's, you can see he's it. looking and he's like, and he'd just walk up to people and he would go like this and he would touch people in different places. Some be on their shoulders, some be on their forehead, on their cheek, on their knee. I mean, he'd just touch people in different places. And every time he did, Boom. I mean, people go down, people were getting healed. People were getting, I mean, I didn't see actual deliverance, but I'm, I'm assuming there's, you know, sure. people get yeah. touched like that. There's stuff going on. And it was just, it was crazy. Well, the next day I'm like, so what was like, what was the, the finger thing? Like, what, what were you seeing? He goes, mm-hmm. Oh, it, it was, it was kind of weird. And I'm like, well, yeah. Okay. Tell me what this. Well, I knew it was the Lord, but I saw a unicorn. And he would put his horn through people. And so I would just touch their body wherever the horn came through. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's weird. Okay, I'm glad you didn't tell me that yesterday. <laughs> yeah, because I was the pastor. <laughs> like, I was like, I love like, this guy. <laughs> but then he explains, well, what's the single horn? Mm-hmm. The single power, the one that has power. He's, I mean, it's Jesus. That's one of the pictures of Jesus. It's one of the ways that he shows up. Because he's the united, the one that is more than one, but the horn representing power. I'm like, okay, show me that in a book. You're not going to find it. Right. You're not going to find it. But it, the fruit that came from it, the simple trust. Now, was it was it sinful? I mean, we talked in our other conversation. We were talking, well, how do you, how do you you know discern? Like, oh, okay, I don't see it in scripture. Yeah, but does it violate God's nature? Like the personality, right. the person of God, not just the things that I've heard and the things that I've learned, mm-hmm. but he does weird things that work. There's a place, like when you're talking about that, I, what we're talking about is when you're operating in, in the realm and in, in how to operate it. Mm-hmm. When you talk about co-laboring, yeah. there's a part where you're operating in the realm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I've seen Tony, Tony comes to my spiritual dad and I've, I've watched him operate. Now it's fun as a seer Mm -hmm. because I can see what he's doing, you know, and I know, I don't know if everyone in the room can see, but there's times where I've talked to him about this, where he'll, he'll say something to a person he's ministering. He's got a person in front of him and he, now Tony will sit down and do this. He's not even, he won't even touch him. He just, you know, he's just, he's operating in the realm. He knows how to operate in the realm with God. And he'll say the glory realm's about to hit you. And he'll count it down. And he'll say in five, four, three, two, one. Mm. And he'll pause. And when he says one, that person will shake under the electric power of God and be thrown across the room. Wow. And I'll watch 
I'll sit, you know, I we've done meetings together. I will watch and I will look and see it coming. And I'm like, ah, okay. So what is he doing? Yeah. He's co-laboring. Yeah. And he'll say in five, four, three, two, and he'll wait until it's going to fall and then go and one and then boom, the yeah. person falls down. Yeah. Right. Now, is he seeing it? He's or seen, he just he's knowing. He's a seer. He's okay. a seer. But but because I know people is, that operate in that, and they just know they it, just but they're not know. actually seeing. He's but seeing the seer it. Can I see asked it. him. I said, "Are uh, you? Is this just your knower going off, or are you seeing?" And he says, "I'm seeing." Okay. And he'll. That's fun. He'll see it, right? Uh, but in that place, um, you can't operate. It's not what we're talking about. Is it's not your own giftings. Mm -hmm. There's such a dependence on God. That, that you can't manufacture that. Yeah. It's not going to happen out of your own giftings. Yeah. It's just as you're, but at the same time, we're not under um, like an orphan spirit or like a poverty spirit. Like you, you know who you are with the Lord. And so when you know, when you and I know who we are, we can co-labor with God. Yeah. But often if we don't know our sonship, our daughtership, we can't get to that place. Yeah. Because those who may be watching this, because, you know, what, these things mm. that we're talking about, first of all, it offends your mind. Yeah. I, I get it. We're talking, <laughs> unicorn, yeah. what are they talking about? Yeah. Um, it can offend your mind, but 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 this thing about co-laboring, um, it comes out of that place of sonship and daughtership. I know what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to put it into words right now. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. If you don't know who you are, yeah. you can't get to that place of yeah. operating in that. Because you'll be striving. Right. You'll be afraid it's not going to work out. Yes. You, you'll, you'll get your hands tied into it and mm -hmm. try to make it about you. And Right. But that, that adoption, the spirit of adoption. I remember hearing Ed Pjork. You ever heard that name? No. So he hasn't, I don't know, I don't even know what he's doing anymore. I'm not sure, but he, he was like during the nineties, during Toronto, when that whole thing was going on, he was one of the major teachers on the father's heart, him and Jack Frost were mm -hmm. the, the two main ones. Um, he was mainly in the vineyard movement. So Ed Pjork, I remember him talking about his experience of getting to know the father's love. Mm -hmm. And he would talk about being, you know, this minister and he, he did conferences with John Wimber and different ones. And he'd, you know, somebody would ask him to get up and he'd be freaking out like, oh, like, is the anointing going to come? Like, am I going to preach good enough for healing to happen? And, oh, and like just yes. going through it. And, yeah. and then he has this encounter with the father's love mm -hmm. and he stops striving. Yep. And it just... And, and he, you know, it came ministry time and it was just like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Right. Instead of what am I going to do? What is this going to look like, like on me? Or what am I going to do? Or is this going to yeah. happen? What if it doesn't happen? There's no fear in heaven. Yes. And when you're not striving, you're not under fear. Yeah. You can't operate the heavenly realm if you're under that. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. I, I had an experience one time where the Lord took me in, in the scripture, it says, you know, in the presence of my enemies, you prepare a table before me. And the Lord actually took me to that table. There is a table mm -hmm. in heaven. I've talked to a couple people who've been there and I was there with Jesus. And there was this huge feast there and there's all these different seats. Hmm. And, um, I ate and pomegranates were there, which are my yeah. favorite fruit. And there's a big bowl and there's foods that I didn't know. There was bread there for all those who are gluten-free people. <laughs> there is bread in heaven, just say it. Um, and but, there's, there's no gluten intolerance in heaven. So yeah, matter, yeah, so yeah, that's so okay. really good bread in heaven. <laughs> in case you were wondering. And, uh, but, but the Lord then said, I want, I heard something under the table and the Lord said, I want you to come look and see what's under the table on it. So I went with Jesus under the table and I was taken into a different place. Okay. So it was no longer under the table, but I saw all these people with huge bloated bellies. They were malnutrition and they were scrapping for little tiny crumbs, mm. scrapping. 
And I just said, Jesus, what are they doing? Why don't they come up to the table? There's plenty of seats. And he said, Anna, Anna. And he said, don't you know, this is where most of the church is at. And he said, don't you know, you have to bring people up here. And it breaks my heart because I saw Mm. all those seats open. Yeah. And there was so much to take. There was so much food. There was not lack. There was nothing without. And and that's what we're talking about. Sonship and daughtership. When I know that I have a seat at that table, I don't have to settle for a crumb from him. He has more than enough. And I don't as well have to take a position or a posture of like, I have to sit on the floor. Right. I can sit with him and eat and dine with him. That's the banquet table. Yeah. But that, when you know you're a son and your daughter, then you take your seat and then you invite other people to take their seat. Right. Then it's not just about sitting down anymore. Hey dad, I'm bringing a friend over to dinner. Exactly. (laughs) You bring your friend there. Yeah. And you say, hey, yeah, to your friend, so hey, friend, you don't just, you know, friends, when they come into the new house, right? When a friend <laughs> comes to a new house, they're like, can I have that? Can I, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, take whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. But, and you invite them into that kind of relationship yes. with the Lord. Yeah. And when you and I really get that, and I mean, I feel like we're, we're a work in progress. Right. And, and there's times where the Lord will still to me say, now, come on, <laughs> say you're a daughter now. Come on. Yeah. Don't beg like that. Yeah. Anna, you're a daughter. Yeah. You, John, your son, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and he works on her. He works that into us. Okay. Yeah. This is what to be an heir of the kingdom of Christ means. Like I'm an heir, you know, um, and he breaks that orphan spirit out of us, the poverty spirit that says, I have to settle. I have to get less. And he works on our character. Then we can operate. Yeah. Then we can operate heaven. Yeah. Then we can really co-labor. Because like you said, it's, there's no fear anymore of, am I going to, am I going to, you know, am I going to screw up? Am I going to do this wrong. God, what if the anointing doesn't come? Yeah. What if you don't show up? Listen, God loves to show up. <laughs> yeah. So you can get over that. Yeah. But but it's not about you and I and what we're trying to do mm-hmm. and manufacture. Yeah. We just get to feast and just have fun with him. One of the one of the ways that and I spent a lot of years praying for meetings I was gonna be ministering at. And I'm like, oh, God, show up. Oh, God, come. Come with your power. And now, like, I I'm, I always invite him to come. Sure. So it's not that I never pray, you know, God, please come. But it's not like, oh, God, come. Like, will you please? You know, I'm trying to convince you. Um, when I know I'm going to minister, what I do is I actually, I just close my eyes and look at him until I see his eyes mm-hmm. smiling at me. And I know I see him because I know the smile that's in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And when I don't see the smile, I know it's my imagination. Mm -hmm. Like I can feel the difference Mm -hmm. when I'm seeing what I'm, what I'm seeing versus when I'm seeing something. And when I see that smile, that's the place that I minister from. Now it's the same thing that you just said. It's that place of like, I know that I know that I know that he's pleased with me Mm -hmm. because it's who he is. And, and I think that it, every one of us, whether, whether we're going to be ministering or, or just in our lives, that, that there's an invitation to live in that place at all times, just living under the smile of God, mm. you know, that, that, um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his countenance upon you that. That, that idea of lifting up the countenance, it's may his face grow bright when he looks at you. Mm-hmm. That, that's literally what it means. Like that's, that's that picture. Like, like oh, I've been longing. I've been waiting. Oh, you, you make me so happy. And, and that recognition of that, out of that place, the things just flow. Mm-hmm. 
And then he could take you into the weird stuff and you still feel the smile. It's like, okay, I'm uncomfortable, but you're comfortable. So I think I'll change <laughs> <laughs> and I'll let you stay the way that you are. Cause you're pretty good, <laughs> you yeah. know, and, and being able to come into that place and, and mm -hmm. man, I, you know, I mean, you, you get into that place and then you start to forget that you're trying to make something happen, which is really good because it's really bad to try to make something happen. Mm -hmm. And you just get to have fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, mean, I, I love having fun. I've actually had people that they didn't understand it. They're like, looks like you're just having fun. I'm like, yes. That's, <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's the whole goal. That's <laughs> you know? the goal. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, so. I'm a, I, I've actually done this a couple of times. Take my water bottle and pray for it instead of a handkerchief and then hand it to people <laughs> and then watch and watch what happens to them. Uh -huh. And it's just like, why not? Let's play with this a little bit. Let's oh, see what happens. I, Let's, I remember know. in Africa when my husband and me were, we were with Heidi and Roland Baker and, and they just, and Iris just, Ministries, they just love to have fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. Which is good because they're in the middle of a, like a war zone. Yeah. But they know the goodness of God. And I remember there was things that it would offend your mind that I was like, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm a seer, but I was like, I don't know. I mean, it was stretching, you know? I remember we were in a meeting and this one guy, <laughs> this is a funny story, but it's funny to hear these stories. It breaks the religious spirit off of, uh, you know, yeah. who they're listening to this. And I remember it was offend. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was kind of offended. But there's, I remember there's this one guy and he had this, he said that God had given him a bucket. Now I didn't see the bucket. So I'm like, okay, now this guy's carrying around this bucket and it looked really heavy because he was straining. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't know, you know, and, and my husband was just like, I don't know about that guy. You know, he's just like, oh. and this guy's straining. And he said that God told him to dump it on people. And that when he dumped it, they would feel the presence of God come over them. You know, and he said, drink, drink, drink. <laughs> and I was just like, I just don't know. Like, and I'm like, okay, I don't know. But I feel like this is God. But I don't know. So the guy's going around and you could see some people were just really agitated and, and, and he would take his bucket and he's like, you know, straining. And then he would dump and I would watch 20 people fall out in the spirit in boom. And I'm like, I want to drink. <laughs> I want some of that. I'm good. I want some of that. So yes. I like went running for it. I'm like, come on, come on, give me the, give me the, do the bucket, do two, do, do, I want the double dose. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what I was asking for. I was under the presence for five hours, John, for five hours. I fell out and I was singing come into on. heaven. I mean, and I was seeing all these different places in heaven and, and the Lord so Jesus. dealt with things in my heart in that place that he's like, mm -hmm. okay, let's work on this, Anna. And then he's like, now I want to show you something else, you know, but Come on. But see, I was at first I was so offended by the fun. Yeah. This. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't know. You know, this just looks so kooky and weird. Yeah. But 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 it looked fun. Like they were having fun. Yeah. You know, but it but I knew that it was God. For yeah. those who were like, well, I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And that's one of the things I always try to do is is in in those times when my mind is offended, I'm always asking, are you still here? We have to discern. Okay. We have to ask God in right. that moment yeah. because there are, there is the counterfeit. I oh, can't, yeah. We can't talk about this and not mention that there's a counter, counterfeit. Oh, yeah. And so we have to, you know, go back to, okay, God. Yeah. Is this really you? Is this you? Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm there and I'm offended, but his presence is still there and he's not offended. I'm like, okay, so maybe I need to change. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe this is okay. I, I didn't know this was okay, but I guess this is okay. Right. Um, and, and I will, I will hold on to things. And then I, I, I'm, I love, I, I look for fruit. Right. So, you know, two weeks later, 
this person got touched. Hey, what's going on in your life? You know, what's changed? What's their character since like? Since that too? happened. Right. You know, I've seen, you know, some stuff. Like, I, I did something one time. I don't even talk about it because it was just, it was too weird. But afterwards, this guy calls me up and says, hey, by the way, since you told me to do that, um, I am remembering scriptures I've never memorized. Hmm. What? Wait a second. Now, that's good fruit. That was really weird. Now, yeah, I wouldn't right. suggest it because somebody might try to do it. <laughs> That's, you know, because it, it wasn't about the gone. thing. You're right. It was about the moment. It was about the moment and me getting beyond my judgments, my religious activity mm-hmm. into, hey, I'm just having fun with dad. And I'm not trying to be flippant. I, I, I have, I mean, I developed the fear of the Lord. I mean, he's, he's really fun. Yeah. I mean, he's so much fun Mm -hmm. and he has a sense of humor. Doesn't he? Yeah. Oh man. If you don't get a sense of humor, you're like, you're going to be offended by God a lot. (laughs) Well, he'll get you. (laughs) He will get you sooner or later. And he'll walk you through some healing. (laughs) Yes. And you know, and then you can be free. Freedom is amazing. Yeah. 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 I remember thinking about just weird, funny things. Mm. Um, before church, I'm walking through the hallway, and there's a little area where there's a sink and kitchen area, and three or four of our intercessors were just standing there having a conversation. I could have walked right past them, but I just flash, not that I saw with my physical eyes, but just a flash in my mind's eye. I saw a pool of water right. in between them, and I thought, they need to get wet. So I just jumped <laughs> like I was walking and I just jumped into the middle of them. Like I was jumping in a, in a mud puddle to splash them. And every single one of them went out. They all hit the floor laughing hysterically. They had to crawl into the service. It was just like, that's just, if I would have thought about it, I probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah. I probably would have said, oh, I believe there's a pool in between you guys. Let me just, you know, I'm going to stop really quick to splash you and explain everything and made myself feel better. But it was just that, that moment. And it was so fun. I mean, I laughed hysterically. They were laughing hysterically. Yeah. That was one of the weirdest things that I've done. Like, I, mean, I don't know if that's the weirdest thing that I've done, but it was really, it was weird and uncomfortable, but God used it. Mm-hmm. But Again, I mean, coming back to, does it fit God's character? Does it fit who he is? Did it, did it create sin? Did it create blasphemy? No, right. people got blessed. Yeah. People smiled. People laughed. Um, I mean, church is not God. It's not supposed to give people the, the bitter beer face. Remember bitter beer face? <laughs> <laughs> what was it about 10 15 years ago mm-hmm. it was the miller light commercial yeah. <laughs> bitter beer face like uh, you know just, you know that that that's religion right we're supposed to have fun yeah, yeah. i love that example because really if you break you can't like what you were saying like if you really would have taken the time to think through that whole thing i don't know if you would have done that so if you look back on that at some point, it was just like, oh, I see this, and I'm going to, you yeah. know, if you would really break it down, you saw, mm-hmm. and you responded. Yep. And you just felt an inclination from God to do that. There wasn't a, okay, I'm going to explain this, teach this, yeah. I'm going to do. Yeah. And that is co-laboring. Yeah. That is. Yeah. I like that, though, because you have to look at that. People yeah. would break that down and could say, well, how, how does he do that? How did, and there is an aspect of being childlike. Mm-hmm. And if, if your papa daddy says, go here, do this, you say, okay. And you do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And, yeah. And then he says, okay, now I'm going to give you more and, and trust you with more. Because you see, you walk in that trust relationship with God, right? Where you're not under fear. You're not, John, you're not like, well, if I jump, uh, this could go bad. Yeah. You don't even think about that yeah. in the moment. Like this could turn out really, really bad. You're just like, okay, God says, so I do. Mm-hmm. And then you do. And then you watch God yeah. do his thing. Yeah. 
and there's times when I'm doing stuff and I'm, I'm, it's like, I'm standing outside of myself, analyzing what I'm doing, thinking, Oh, know. that's weird. Right. Why would you don't do that? But I'm already doing it. Mm -hmm. And, but he uses it. And what's the fruit? Like people, all of a sudden there's, there's more joy. Sure. There, there's freedom. People have more of an appreciation for God. They're, they're more in love with him. They're more in awe of him. They're, they're more free to be able to just jump into, into who he is. They're not so afraid of messing up. Mm. And, you know, I, I grew up in a very critical home. Mm. Like every little thing, if you did something wrong, like you knew and you paid for it. Mm. And so that when I came to the church, that was my thought of God. I mean, it took years to get that freed. And so that, that voice still sometimes it's, it's back there. I just don't let it control me anymore. And, you know, I'll catch myself, I'll, I'll do something, I'll be, you know, but there's no longer a fear of, oh, if I mess this up, I'm gonna have to pay for this later. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really trying just to have fun with dad. I mean, what if, what happens if I mess up? It, he can use my mistake. He'll use it. And turn it for exactly. good. He'll, and and right. people are still going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. And then later he's going to say, hey, here's, here's what. Here's where that came from. This is why you did that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I didn't know that was in there. I don't want that in there. And he, he heals. Right. He cleanses. But that simple trust and that freedom to co-labor. Right. No longer do I call you slaves, but I call you friends. Mm -hmm. Slave doesn't get to enter into the secret counsel of the master. Mm -hmm. But friends, I'm going to tell you everything dad tells me. Yep. That's who you are. That's who I am. That's who we are. This is, this is relationship. Somewhere um, we've gotten, I don't know what you think about this, but I, I feel like somewhere we've gotten to the place of, because in the prophetic movement, there was, I've seen also the prophetic done bad hmm. where um, prophets uh, hurt and do damage yeah. because they're, uh, they're just not operating and not co-laboring with God, but maybe out of their own giftings, you mm -hmm. know, and, and because of that, then there's a fear now, cause I mentor a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so there's a fear of, okay, well, I want to get the whole revelation and get it correct before I prophesy Yeah. before I give, you know, the whole thing to the word to the yeah. person i've got to get understanding behind it and and actually that's a little bit of religion and yeah. it, and i'm not saying john i'm not saying that we don't want revelation of god mm -hmm. okay because you know we can do damage if we're not careful in hearing god correctly yeah. and we can get a word okay you can also get a word but get the translation off yes yeah oh yeah and, um, I remember one time, yeah, anyway, that's another story, but I remember one time I was given a prophetic word that was just really, really off, mm -hmm. but the word that the word was right. It was the translation was yeah. off, you know, and, um, anyways, but people can get so afraid now. Now we're in this mm -hmm. place where I see, um, people afraid to do it wrong. Yeah. And. I tell them this, I always tell the story. One time I was ministering and this lady came into our healing rooms and I said, okay, God, what do you want to show me? And he saw, and this lady, I mean, she's in, okay, she's in her mid fifties and she's really serious and quiet and she's crying. So it was a really hard, tender moment of what she was walking through in life. And I get a picture of her riding a pool noodle. And I'm like, God, like, <laughs> seriously, I was like, you got anything else? Like, I mean, I don't know. And he said, nope, that's all you get. <laughs> and I said, can you explain to me what that's about? And he said, no. Nope. And he said, that's all you get. And I was wow. like, okay, okay. I'm going yeah. to be obedient. So I go to the lady and I'm like, listen, I'm really sorry. <laughs> But I have to tell you, I got this picture from the Lord 
And I said, it could be really off. I just want to warn you. And if it is, I'm sorry. I'm going to apologize in advance. Because I never want to be the prophet that comes yeah. in and says, this is the voice I've got. Yeah. And I want to go yeah. in as I'm learning. We're yeah. all learning. You're obviously not very mature because you don't believe me. You need to trust the anointing. No, that's so yeah. annoying. And I've had yeah. people do that to me. So I'm just like, listen, I could be totally wrong. But here's the thing. <clears throat> and I was like, I was like, I didn't even want to look at her. You know, I was like, I kind of saw this picture for you and I saw you riding a pool, you know, pool noodle. And right when I said that, I said, and God says, and then the revelation came then. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, right. Yeah. Of, oh, God says right. this about what happened next to the pool. And, you know, and God's breaking trauma off of you and restoring your joy. And that lady is bawling, crying, and she's hugging me. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on. And my right. team's there and they're like, what is going on? And I'm like, I don't know, yeah. but it's God. I don't know. And then I'm like, okay, I've got to ask you, what did God just do? <laughs> what was that? Can you clue <laughs> the rest of us? And, and, you know, she had, um, her, it was her brother had almost drowned when she was a kid. And she used to love riding pool noodles when she was a kid. She watched him drown. They saved his life. He didn't die. But, but what happened out of that trauma, the joy just got sucked out of her. And she remembers being really joyful before then. And then after that, she just kind of lost her joy. And so we prayed for healing from that trauma yeah. and, and joy just to be restored. Back. Come on. But see, I just share that because I didn't have the full revelation. No. But what I do know is I know God and I know he said, okay, this is all I'm going to give you, but you're going to trust me to give you the rest. Oh. And so I shared it. And, and I get that we want, obviously we want revelation, but it doesn't always work like that. Mm -hmm. You don't, we don't always, if we know that we know everything, then we're in trouble. Right. We're really in trouble. Yeah. Sometimes it looks like, okay, I, I see that angel God standing God. over there. I remember I did this one time. There was a woman, I was praying for her. And the angel, I saw the angel was on fire. I could see fire. And the Lord said, touch the fiery wing and touch the lady. And I'm like, okay, I have no idea what he's about to do, but I know to <laughs> obey him. So I touched the fiery wing and I looked at her and touched her and she went flying down under the fire of God. And there was something that just got released. And I'm like, okay, that's good. I don't know, but it's good. What's happening? Yeah. We don't always know. Yeah. But we know him. We right? know him. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, one, one of the things I've, I've realized, because I, I give prophetic words sometimes, I'm thinking this makes no sense whatsoever, right. mm -hmm. but then the person's hearing it and they're like, how did you know that? That makes all the sense in the world. And, and, and there's this disconnect between our experience and our world and this person's experience and this person's world. And we're trying to understand something that fits over here from here. Mm -hmm. We're not going to understand it. Right. And so, once we give it to them, it makes no sense to us. That's just weird. And it makes all the sense in the world. There's, there's a trust that gets built over time. And it, it's, it's that risk and that being willing to risk mm -hmm. and being willing to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not willing to make a mistake, you'll never do anything. Right. You just hold back and, and you'll, you'll be quiet, and, but you won't end up with the testimonies. The testimonies come usually from not the, oh, I was so anointed and I knew exactly what was going to happen and I did exactly what God showed me. He told me the whole thing beforehand. No. Like that's, I, mm -mm. I don't know that I've ever had that. No, maybe, I can't. Maybe I'm, I'm like, once, I don't know. Eh, maybe. Usually it's like, oh, that's, uh, I, well, Okay, here. <laughs> you know? and, and then sometimes you make the, the craziest mistakes. This, this just happened last week. I was at a restaurant. I was at Shake Shack. I love, I love burgers. So I'm at Shake Shack having a burger, and I'm sitting there, and I hear them call somebody's order. Esther, your order's ready. 
And I'm like, Esther, Hadassah. I'm like, I wonder if they know the story of Esther. And then I started thinking about how Esther was given her position because she was the most beautiful person in the land. But that's not why God gave her the position. What she accomplished had nothing to do with it. It had to do with her wisdom, had to do with her service right. and her dedication to the Lord. And, and I, but it's like, I'm getting all this revelation, but I had no desire to go tell this person. I didn't feel like I should. I actually wondered, I questioned it. No, ignored it, forgot about it. Later that day, I'm doing a Facebook live video with some friends and there's somebody on there. And, and funny enough, I can't even remember their name. It wasn't Esther. Oh, it was Rachel. I think it was Rachel. Maybe it was Rachel, but it was another biblical name. No, it was Hannah. That's what it was. It was Hannah. So I see the name Hannah. My mind understands Esther. But I say, Hannah, I don't, you know, I had the weirdest thing. I was at the restaurant. I told the whole story because I realized this is a prophetic word for Because mm -hmm. she's Esther. Her name's Hannah. Mm -hmm. But I thought her name was Esther. Mm -hmm. And I just went with it. And then I realized what I was doing when I started saying her name. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. Your name's Hannah. You know what? I still think this is a word. And I just went for right. it. And it was spot on exactly what she needed to hear. I think I'm making a mistake. But I'm not actually making a mistake. Mm -hmm. are, are you willing to make a mistake? Right. And I mean, we could tell probably plenty of stories when we really oh. did make a mistake. Yes. <laughs> I was like, no, that means absolutely nothing to me. I'm like, okay. I thought that was God. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> but we don't have to be perfect to, yeah. to, um, we're just lovers of Jesus. So yeah. we don't have to be perfect. And I think what you're saying and what we're seeing is sometimes people hold back out of fear. Yeah. of making mistakes, that of getting it perfect and they're missing out on yeah. what they could be walking in, yeah. what you and I could be walking in because yeah. of that fear. Yeah. But there's absolutely, I'm telling you, there's no fear in heaven. Yeah. So when someone's under fear, then they haven't really tasted heaven or maybe gotten little bits or maybe they're getting crumbs. Yeah. Come on. Maybe they're That's getting so crumbs, good. but they're not really tasting heaven. Yeah. Because when yeah. you're in heaven, <laughs> all nice. perfection, I mean, gets broken off. Because yeah. what happens is Jesus looks at you and he looks through you. Through. Yeah. Through you. All of you. And those fiery eyes burn through you. And you realize he sees everything, everything. And you realize you're exposed. Yeah. And not only him, but everyone else there in the room sees it. Because there's others there. Right? Yeah. And there's nothing hidden in the light. There's nothing hidden. You can't hide. You can't manufacture. You can't fake who you are. Yeah. You can't put on anyone else's mantle. You are who you are. Right? And he looks at you and sees it all. And he sees all of those things and everybody sees it. But in that moment, you're not like, ah, everyone mm. sees me because there's no fear. Right. It's just the realization is there. Yeah. Everyone can see it. Yeah. And he looks at it and he says, I love you. I'm so happy you're here. And everyone is so happy you're there. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And <laughs> heaven is cheering you and I on yeah. in all our I, imperfections. It's so, it's so important because something changes inside of you mm -hmm. when you, cause we know in our heads, but when you know that, you know, that, you know, mm -hmm. that you are fully known and still fully loved, something breaks. Then you're unstoppable. Yeah. Then you become very dangerous. That's when you <laughs> become dangerous to the enemy. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because there's no fear. Yeah. So I don't have fear to, okay, I'm going to go talk to that person. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't look like the best place to talk to them. They're in the middle of getting, you know, filling up their drink cup in the store. 
and, or in the <laughs> restaurant and, and I'm going to go talk to them and this might not be the best place, but, but I, oh, well, yeah. yeah, God says do it. So here I go, you know, and you just, okay. And you just jump in <laughs> and then God does his thing. And you're like, couldn't have made that one up. <laughs> didn't see that one coming, you know? Right. And you're like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. Okay. God, what's next? You know, yeah. he's such a fun God. He is. Would you do me a favor? Like, Would you pray for the people watching just for that freedom of fear? Sure. That they would have that experience of knowing that they're loved to the depths in the midst of where they're at right now. Yeah. Wow. Lord, I just pray right now in Jesus' name that you would be completely set free of fear. That you and I could step into sonship and daughtership. That you were created actually to shine, to shine and not be under oppression. I don't know, John, I just hear mm. oppression be broken off yeah. in Jesus name. Yes. So I command the chains of oppression to be broken off of you. And I speak the word that I hear God saying, which is come up here yeah. and taste and see that I am good. Mm. Taste and see all that he has for you. So I break perfection off of you right now. In Jesus' name, you can shake like I'm shaking. Just shake it off. You're not under that any longer. That's not who you and I were created to be. And Lord, I pray now for boldness and courage to be released and imparted to step out into the wild, wonderful things, God, that you have in store for each one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's so good. Anna, thank you. Thanks. I know we just kind of started right in the middle of this conversation, but for those of you that didn't know, this is Anna Werner. Oh, hello. <laughs> so you saw her name in the beginning. It was on the screen, but I um, wanted to say that, but really appreciate who you are and what you carry and what you're doing to open the eyes of the body of Christ. Thank so thank you. Thanks for having me. It's fun. Yeah. Awesome. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the content that you just watched. We are completely listener supported. So if you would like to help us make more great content and get it out there, there's a donate button right here, or you can go to streamsministries.com and click on the donate button. We would love your support and subscribe to our channel. Let your friends know about us. We want to help people know God and respond to his voice.